you sort of have to feel sorry for Sony. The studio has been bombarded by bad publicity over the past few years, from the infamous email scandal to the string of box office studs. Even their animation division forwents new IP in favor of sequels and direct-to-video titles. As of current, seven of their twelve full-length productions are sequels and spin-offs. Seeking potential brands to join their roster of animated pictures, Sony began shopping around. Warner Brothers had struck gold with 2014's The Lego Movie, which surprised many people. Legos were a non-narrative property without an established story, yet the screenwriters created a witty satire centered around a plot that had been missing from the source IP. Sure, there's no denying it was a flashy commercial for the building sets, but it was conveyed in an entertaining manner. With the Lego movie success, Hollywood has snatched up rights to other non-narrative brands, such as Play-Doh, Tetris, Magic 8-Ball, and Viewmaster. While it may seem as though Hollywood has run out of creative ideas, this is actually a marketing strategy known as unaided awareness. The audiences have known about that specific brand or item for years, and Hollywood banks on that nostalgia factor to sell the movie instead of pushing it in a costly marketing campaign. In fact, obtaining the rights to some of these brands is less expensive than hiring some A-list actors. While adapting brands into visual medium has been widespread in children's television since 1981, and was prevalent in the early 2000s when Disney began making movies based on their attractions, the U.S. financial crisis of 2008 made the practice a mainstay in filmmaking, as the studios were increasingly hesitant to invest hundreds of millions of dollars into new projects that would require pricey pitches, productions, and marketing. There's a fine line, though, between pop icon nostalgia and fads. The Lego movie was nostalgia-driven. Nostalgia-driven films have a longer shelf life than fad-driven projects, such as Fred the Movie or the Geico Caveman series. Even though 2016's Angry Birds movie netted a good revenue at the box office, the game is only a few years old, so it doesn't evoke strong nostalgia. Rather, the flick was released years after the app's glory days, as is the case with fad-based projects. Which brings us back to Sony, and one of Hollywood's most peculiar non-narrative acquisitions in recent years. On July 21, 2015, we learned that Sony Pictures had participated in a bidding war against Paramount and Warner Brothers for film rights to an Emoji movie. Yes, Emoji. Invented by Shigetaka Kurita in 1998, the ideograms known as Emoji, E meaning picture, and Moji meaning writing character, found themselves on Japanese mobile phones, and later on the internet, iPhones, and Androids. Sony reportedly paid Tony Leondis and Eric Siegel $1 million for their storyboard. This was a mere three days before the release of Sony's ill-fated Pixels, a movie that had attempted to tap into viewers' nostalgia with vintage video game cameos, but ultimately failed due to a bad story and script. Early details revealed the Emoji Movie would tell about Jean, an emoji that lives in a texting app on a teenager's phone. Emojis are only supposed to exhibit one emotion, but Gene, who's a meh emoji like his parents, was born with a glitch that allows him to experience an array of emotions. Gene's worried that this flaw will bring shame to his family, and he might face deletion. So, he leaves the texting app with a group of his friends to look for a code that will fix him. On April 12, 2016 CinemaCon, Sony Animation President Christine Belson expounded on more details with a pitch. Quote, Inside your phone, there's a secret world. And we enter through the text app where we discover Emoji Valley where the industrious emoji live and work. Unquote. 
the characters will travel from app to app by way of sailing a boat on streaming music, which is being sponsored by Spotify. By the end of the first act, Jean and Pals will find themselves on the home screen, dubbed the World of the Wallpaper, which will act as a hub, similar to Game Central Station in Wreck-It Ralph. The emojis will visit a gaming app, photo sharing app, video streaming app, a dance app, and a file sharing app. In addition to Spotify and possibly Facebook, Sony is partnering with other notable app brands, which will all have cameos in the digital world. The film will be directed by co-writer Tony Leondis and is set for August 11th, 2017. The fact that Sony fought for the rights to make this film and is teaming up with major app companies indicates they have high hopes that this flick will be a gleaming success. At CinemaCon 2016, Sony CEO Tom Rothman underscored the importance of Sony's original features, one of which being the Emoji Movie. Can it really be called original, though, if it's just going to be a feature-length commercial showcasing apps that paid Sony for screen time? Will said apps be relevant next year? Or will it be like how Blockbuster paid to be a factory install phone app before it went out of business? This is one of Emoji Movies, as well as any fad-based movies, dilemmas. They're pitched during the tail end of the source material's popularity, and the finished product is presented years later. The Angry Birds game came to phones in 2009, and peaked in 2011. What good did it do for the franchise to release a movie in 2016? This delay results in a movie that's already dated before it's out. It's no surprise, but the movie is already being panned. We've seen the person feels like outcast and wants to fit in trope time and again. We've seen the secret world of, insert name, countless times. Watching characters travel from one place to another has been recently explored. How is Sony proclaiming this is original if it's a retreaded story and an advertising for current apps and top 10 music? The inclusion of the app's screen times will necessitate precision writing to come across as flowing organically, and not a blatant product placement. As for the story, we all know Gene will find the code to fix his personality, but the update won't take, and he'll finally learn it's okay to be himself. Uh, spoiler alert, I guess? And what's with the single personality characters? Didn't we just see that in Inside Out? Oh wait, that movie also had characters traveling through a fantastical land. And didn't Wreck-It Ralph want to change how others saw him, and he too left his home to seek a MacGuffin in another world? There's another movie that included famous brands and a hidden land. What was it? Oh yes, Food Fight. Food Fight? during its production, was considered a major project by the filmmakers and companies involved, and the idea on paper seems to work. A film noir brimming with pop icon nostalgia, in the same vein as Who Framed Roger Rabbit. However, lacking a good script and utilizing Sims quality animation, it became known as one of the worst animated films of all time, and no amount of recognizable mascots could salvage it. Will people want to watch this? Sure, out of curiosity. Contrary to what Sony is thinking, people aren't going to flock to this film. Emojis aren't revolutionary enough to warrant a movie, especially one that will include songs, apps, and internet slang that's hip with the kids currently in 2016, all centered around a paper-thin plot that could be found in countless children's books and topped with a heaping helping of product placements. The movie has already garnered negative press, and that's unlikely to change as August 2017 draws near. What will critics think about it? Many will say the writing's flat, the dialogue tedious, and the general idea lazy and dull. Others will say it's cashing in on the Lego movie and Wreck-It Ralph. The movie may prompt some people to throw away their phones. Was it a good idea to make this movie? No, for two reasons. 
One, the obvious points, and two, possible trademark infringements. It turns out, former German video game executive Marco Huskas filed emoji trademarks on August 19th, 2013, and created around 3,000 ideograms for his business, the Emoji Company. He currently holds most of the rights to emoji merchandise, and even the word itself. Sony could potentially violate his ownership if they attempt to sell merchandise or use the term in the film. Sony had filed dozens of emoji trademark applications in October 2015, but they were all rejected in February 2016. They may decide to change the title to something else, such as the App Movie or Apptropolis. What will be the lasting impression? This movie has experienced infamy since day one. Emojis were never such a red-hot commodity that warranted their own movie, and a movie with a cliched storyline, no less. Just because people use emojis does not mean they're film fodder. We use keyboards, but Hollywood isn't scrambling to make a screen adaptation. Why? Because they're not interesting. Emojis have only been around on phones since 2010, 1999 if you were in Japan, so there's not really a sentimental factor tied to them. As much as I dread a Play-Doh movie, the subject will at least evoke nostalgia for the millions who played with it during their childhood. Emojis are tools meant to garnish text and post, similar to a like button. Where's the like button movie? The fact that the Emoji Movie will encompass the trite, be yourself moral, with overt product placement throughout, will only hinder it, and it may find itself on par with Food Fight's notoriety. While it's true that many people do enjoy seeing pop icons brought to life in films, including such things does not ensure a blockbuster, as I had mentioned was the case with Great Detective Pikachu and other video game films. Let's compare Food Fights to Wreck-It Ralph. Both flicks feature pop icon characters in fantastical worlds, and there's a menacing force threatening said worlds and attempting to subvert the inhabitants. There's a sad protagonist, the sidekick that acts as the voice of reason, the second sidekick the protagonist meets in a new environment, the fake-out villain, and the real villain, who was disguised during the film, and ultimately wants to extend their range of power by using an army of insect robots. The same villain also subjugated a character to further their dastardly plan. By the time the end credits roll, peace is restored, the subjugated character is found, and we see a wedding. One of these films made $471 million on a $165 million budget, while the other made $74,000 on a $65 million budget. Can you guess which one was which? Even though both movies had three-act structures containing the setup, confrontation, and resolution, the presentation and execution were as different as night and day. The frightful art and blurry backgrounds, the awkward script, innuendos and entendres, and general low quality of food fights earned it the status of one of the worst animated films. In 2015, the criticism surrounding the Jim and the Holograms movie could be seen on message boards, videos, articles, and web pages long before the film was out. The release turned out to be one of the biggest debacles in film history, leading to Universal pulling it from theaters after only a two-week run. As of now, the Emoji Movie looks to be headed down a similar, dismal path. Fan feedback is a factor in filmmaking nowadays, especially when people can get the latest updates about a title at the click of a mouse or a tap on the screen. Movies are made for audiences, and if potential viewers are voicing such heated disinterest for a title, there's little chance the film will find success once it's in theaters. Who knows, the Emoji Movie may surprise us all and be the runaway hit of 2017. But more than likely, it'll be what everyone is expecting. A 90-minute mess full of unwieldy dialogue and an uninspired story. Oh well, hindsight is at least a great teaching tool.
Okay, next pre-review. Oh, okay. Someone's got a gripe about it. And that someone is Marplotic.